right, good afternoon, folks. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Friday. Finally made it here to the weekend. September 19th, 2025 is the date. 1 11 p.m. here on this Friday afternoon. Uh, latest activity shows a 1.3 earthquake there across California. Still got a bunch of movement up here across the Kamchatka, Russia area. That, uh, man, uh, quite a bit. Let's go ahead and see what we got here. Uh, of course, that 7.8 that struck here yesterday is past the 24-hour time period. So technically, we'll have to go back here the last seven days to see this activity, uh, which, of course, includes a 7.4 and then the more recent 7.8. 108 earthquakes here in the last week, and technically, the majority of those are from yesterday. Uh, following that 7.8 that struck here in the Kamchatka Trench, Kuril Kamchatka Trench, well, as you can see, we've seen many, many fives. And uh, it looks like about 60 of them or so. Some of these may be under the uh, five range down into the mid four. Uh, but that's a lot of earthquake activity. More so than normal from an 8.8. .8. I do want to show you guys here, since the 8.8 .8 struck here, I pulled up uh, roughly about July 1st of this year to the current time period. There's the large events that have struck out here the main quake so far being an 8.8 .8. but remember we had a number of earthquakes even previous to the 8.8 .8. in fact we had a 7.4 back there about 10 days previous to the 8.8 .8 back in july so we got about 22 earthquakes there of magnitude 6.0 and above in this sequence of events and that puts us at uh well, probably about double here in terms of the expected aftershocks on average from an 8.8 .8 earthquake. So should see about 10 aftershocks between 6 to 6.9, and we're at 22. Uh, the 5 range, we're probably double that or more. And uh, aftershock of 7.0 to 7.9, we already got two of those. So uh, again, I, I do think that this may be leaning towards something bigger. Uh, in the area, we do have to watch that closely. I mean, if you think about how much earthquake activity has stirred up since, just since yesterday, since that 7.8, you know, we got 60 earthquakes up here. That is crazy. 59 now, but the number count's gonna go down as we go um, later here into the day, just because of the 24-hour uh, threshold. But uh, got a lot going on out here for sure. Uh, even some further movement down here into the Japan area this morning as well uh, that is into the japan trench about 29 miles deep or so got uh gotta keep an eye here on the nankai trough it looks like there's been more than just one earthquake there around the japan area today uh, so watching this area closely yesterday uh in between all this activity uh in between the big events yesterday we had uh some further activity stirring up here across the middle point boundary that's the filipino plate right around the uh, Taiwan area southward. So still watching that. It looks like it is starting to fill in here to the north and also the south here. Um, any, you know, any, any of these areas here are capable of seeing some larger events. And with the movement north and south here, uh, it makes sense here to watch this area in the middle point boundary. Uh, New Zealand, not so much going on down there. There's a couple threes scattered out and about along the plate boundary, but uh, the main focus, I think, is going to be right here in this area. And that includes Japan region southward. Mariana Trench, the Izu Trench area here is awfully quiet. I'm not seeing any earthquake activity out there today, but you gotta, you got to think there's quite a bit of strain building up on that uh, area of that plate boundary. As the general plate here moves to the northwest, or the general motion of the Pacific plate moves off to the northwest, that increases strain out here across this area. Of course, we've had a lot of activity up north, and yesterday that six-pointer down in, in the uh, Papua New Guinea area, um, which is a decent-sized earthquake as well, uh, that was uh, that would put this area right in that hazard zone. So keeping an eye on that area closely. Um, Hawaii, let's go check out Hawaii real quick. I know they uh, popped in there with an eruption early this morning. Uh, also a 4.1 earthquake. 19 miles deep here underneath the Pahala area of the Big Island. Uh, a lot of shallow activity as well around the Kilauea Volcano. So let's go check it out and see what we have here real quick with the Kilauea 
uh, volcano website, uh, which is right here. See what's happening today. Again, the eruption occurred, it looks like about oh, three in the morning or so. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the webcam imagery and see what's cooking out there. Still erupting, man. Beautiful fountaining going on there. That's not a small event either. Uh, the, <laughs> it's much bigger uh, than uh, it appears. But still looks uh, quite amplified here. These are trees up here on the ridges. So uh, as you can see, this is a, a very large area. Fountaining of lava going way up into the air. And that, uh, that should continue here. I'm thinking for the majority of the day, um, let's take a look here at the deformation data, see where we're at. There's the uh, eruption there. Notice the deflationary event going down. Uh, looks like we'll probably have, uh, I don't know what that noise was. Looks like we'll probably have this here for another couple hours or so. Uh, by this evening, this should be done though. Uh, it doesn't doesn't last much longer than uh, than what we're seeing right now. Just maybe a couple hours or so. But anyway, we'll see what happens following the uh, pause in episode 33. It should start to go back up as it's been a rinse and repeat cycle here since the uh, end of 2024. Back in December it started. This was episode 33. Rinse and repeat going on. All right, California. Well, let's start here in the Pacific Northwest. We've got a little bit of swarming going on there around Mount St. Helens up at the summit area. Although the majority of these earthquakes look like they're fairly deep there, down around the magma chamber, a couple miles down underneath there, uh, including a 0.8, not an 8 magnitude, but a 0.8, four miles underneath this area. Now, if you've been watching my videos, been talking about uh, how we're seeing swarms across a number of volcanoes there in the Cascades. Mount Rainier being the big one in terms of the multitude accounts, but uh, Mount St. Helens here uh, is getting its own little earthquake swarm. So let's go take a look here, see if we can spot this 0.8 at about 2.30 in the morning. It should show up here. Uh, 2.30 in the morning, little 0.8, and with it being deeper underneath the area, it's gonna show up as a kind of a thicker reading there instead of the more spiky, type signals that are indicative of close, shallow earthquake activity. But there's the uh, 0.8. That wouldn't match that, I believe, for that time period. But it does look like there's a number of earthquakes out here. If they're going to count that as an earthquake, all these other ones look like they should be earthquakes as well. Uh, so that's a, a little swarm going on out there. These S waves here are from... Um, the five pointers, upper fives that are occurring there across the Curl Camp Chatka Trench. Jeez, man, what is going on with the phones today? Here, stand by. Put that on silent. Uh, there is a P wave and S waves there from the 7.8 showing up there on Mount St. Helens, thousands of miles away here. That's at, again 7.8 there in Russia. Fairly decent signature. But it does look like we got a swarm stern back up here at Mount St. Helens. Number of earthquakes out there. Quite a bit, I would say. Uh, these guys only showing five of them, with the latest being a little point one, uh, just before eight o'clock this morning. Just before eight o'clock, so that's probably going to be. Um, well, it's very small and it's deeper underneath the area, so it could be this one. It, uh, but there's numerous, you know, there's probably a good 20 or 30 earthquakes on here. If you go and count every single one of these uh, these spikes and these earthquakes at depth, they do look like they're uh, around the magma chamber in terms of that, uh, you know, being well below the summit. Mount Rainier, let's go ahead and check this out real quick. Across this volcano. Uh, yeah, we still got earthquake activity out there as well. That's definitely a legit earthquake. Uh, last night sometime, looks like between 8 and 9. Um, nothing though. Zip zero showing up. As uh, far as the activity goes there across Mount Rainier, I firmly believe they've just completely stopped reporting any earthquake activity here. Uh, and it it's kind of interesting here because 
when they're showing and actually reporting some earthquake activity for a volcano, they normally never show them all at once. They'll pick one volcano and say, okay, we got earthquake activity here, but never at the same time. Even though we have, you know, definitely some earthquake activity stirring up there across Mount Rainier. Those are definitely earthquakes out there for sure. So it's just one of those things here. We'll continue to watch it. No imminent threat of any eruptions there. But we do have some deeper activity underneath Mount St. Helens, which would, uh, with that depth there, about four to five miles or so underneath the area, that would be around the magma chamber. Uh, one earthquake off the coast there of the Cascadia around the Blanco fracture zone. Now, earthquake activity here in this area normally adds further strain here across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. There was an earthquake, a little 1.9, a couple hours following this event, but the tremor counts up here, uh, we'll have to watch that a little bit later in terms of slow slip events. We'll check out the map a little bit later on this evening. Uh, Nevada still got a bunch of earthquake activity here. Bunch of threes, bunch of twos out there as well, all firing up, it looks like around four to five in the morning. Uh, this has just been a, a bunch of earthquake activity with really no main quake. 141 earthquakes here in the last 30 days. Uh, we did have a 4.8 in there and a couple other fours, but it's not like it started off with a 4.8 and all this is aftershock activity. There's really been no main quake here. Just a swarm of earthquakes. Southern California, one earthquake here off of the park field section. That is indeed the park field section. That's interesting quake here, a little 0.9. This area is fairly well primed for a six pointer at least. And uh, it normally does have uh, regular intervals of 20 to 22 years on average, where we see a 6.0 earthquake along the Parkfield section. Last one was back in 2004. Uh, Southern California, fairly, uh, eh, really no uptick going on. Got about 37 earthquakes. That's fairly average there in terms of the microquake movement on a daily count. Nothing big, no unusual swarms going on there for now. A lot of rainfall. Seen, uh, seen certain areas down there getting some big-time flash flooding there in Southern California from the remnants there of Tropical Storm Mario. Uh, up in the Yellowstone National Park, looks like we got a little activity here north of Lake Yellowstone. Uh, this stirred up last night, it looks like, just after 10 o'clock, so better go see what's going on there across Yellowstone. Um, it's going to be back over here where those quakes are. I guess we can check. See, that one's not working. This is completely squashed in terms of the amplitude. Uh, did we check this one? That one's offline. <laughs> Go figure. It does look like there may be one hiding here, which is offline. Man, this one's online. There's some of the earthquake activity there just after 10 o'clock showing up um one, two, well, there's probably a little bit more than what's showing up here these guys showing six earthquakes uh, very small earthquakes all under the two point uh two point zero threshold uh but at least they're reporting some of those it looks like maybe a couple more here in the last 20 minutes or so uh, i don't see any huge uptick going on there across yellowstone just a little bit of earthquake activity there's a big event there from yesterday, and even today, the upper fives will definitely show up here on the seismograph stations. A couple earthquakes there locally to this seismograph station there as well, which is over here across the northwestern corner of Yellowstone National Park. Uh, the rest of the country here, let's see what we got. Uh, really no change out there across the oil fields. That's just c continuing. Nothing going on across the New Madrid seismic zone. Uh, same for the eastern portion of the country as well. So we'll watch the west coast out here. Definitely got uh, some potential. Uh, some further movement down across the South Sandwich Trench from early this morning. 5.4 and a couple other fours. Uh, in the last 30 days, this has been fairly, fairly active. Looks like it's starting to fill in in some of these areas that have been somewhat quiet here. Uh, but that's obviously... Uh, a big subduction zone. I don't think it's going to see another eight-pointer. In fact, it was just 2021 uh, when they had a, an 8.1 out here. So I don't think we'll see uh, that type of event. But but uh, occasionally, as we can see here, we get fives and fours out there 
um, on occasion. Uh, there's 5.5 across the Chile area from last night. Uh, let's see here. A little earthquake activity up in Iceland. The Mediterranean region out here, pretty quiet today. Most of the movement clustered back here across the Russia area and down into the Indonesia area. Again, watch this major uh, middle point boundary. That could fill in quite nicely there with some large earthquake activity. All right, space weather activity, not a whole lot going on in terms of flaring activity. We're hovering in the low sea flare category right now to C1.1. Um, nothing major going on in terms of the aurora forecast. We do have a coronal hole here, number 80, that's facing us. This is not the latest imagery. This is actually over a week old. Uh, but here's the latest imagery. Uh, number 80, just about ready to look us at uh, square in the eye, so to speak. No major solar flares. Um, looking at the sunspots, this is old as well. Uh, really not seeing any uh, super complex sunspots out here. All of these are just fairly disorganized. So really not expecting much there from uh, any of those sunspots in regards to uh, flaring activity. Fairly low threat there at 35% uh, chance for an M flare. X flare around 1% chance or less. Uh, let's see what we got here for any close approach asteroids. Run over here to the NASA site and, uh, well, that big one that passed by us, it looks like it passed by fairly safe. I didn't hear of any impacts out here. Uh, of course that was at about 500,000 miles or so, uh, from the earth. This one's pretty close though, 35,000 miles. That's well within the earth moon distance, but it's a tiny one. 5.2 feet that would pretty much just burn up into the atmosphere there make a neat little fireball uh, newly discovered coming in today there's 70 foot one 135,000 newly discovered a lot of newly discovered asteroids out here uh, but I don't see anything of any noteworthy uh, value here in terms of super close approach and size uh, for severe weather out here today, not a whole lot going on for the severe weather department. Little 2% chance there of tornado activity in the Kansas area. Uh, that goes for some wind and hail threats as well. Uh, but Southern California continuing to get some rain down there. We've had a couple sprinkles out here in Northern California, but that's about it. It does look like uh, some more moisture returning to the area early next week. Um, maybe some finally get some rain out here for northern california and the pacific northwest it looks like jet stream is going to uh, drop down a little bit bring some cooler and uh, a little bit wetter conditions there that is um towards next weekend and early uh the following week not next week but the following week so we'll just kind of see how things play out here Looks like some tropical systems out there towards the beginning of October. Uh, but we'll check back on that as we get closer to that time period. All right, uh, seismograph stations out here. Real quick glance, little earthquake activity in Russia still. I'm telling you, this is just a bunch of earthquake activity. It's way unprecedented in terms of the amount of aftershock activity. Um, I think this is surpassing even the 9.1 earthquake aftershock sequence there uh, from 2011 back you know in Japan there uh, so I do I do think that we still may see some uh, further activity here got to watch the curl cam chatka while this is all moving north and south we do have to watch this middle point boundary all right folks enjoy your Friday we'll be off here on the side come kind of monitoring things seeing uh, how everything develops we'll catch you guys out here later for the Friday night update stay safe everyone